You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters. Well, I don't know if what's worse, a, a, a quarterback just not performing up to par or a quarterback that seems to be completely disconnected and doesn't really care about the team that he's playing for, seems to have quit, seems to have tapped out, and even worse, you're getting paid $230 million fully guaranteed to do just that. And then a fan base that 60 to 70% of said fan base was a very big fan of the previous franchise quarterback who's now down in Tampa Bay playing lights out and has uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 3-1. and one. And, of course, we're talking about Deshaun Watson and Baker Mayfield um, because we got a couple of things that have come out. Number one, we've got the Browns fan base. Hell, they're mad. They're mad as hell over Deshaun Watson choosing to set himself out of that game the other day. And more so, he decided to do it within about two hours of the game. He thrusted what I think is going to be a promising rookie and eventually the future starting quarterback of the Browns. Just just watch that, okay? Uh, Dorian Thompson-Robinson was, was thrust into a completely unwinnable situation against a rival, a big rival, the hated Baltimore Ravens, and um, he had no chance. Okay, he didn't take the reps during the week. Uh, they didn't have the game plan made around him as a rookie quarterback, and no Nick Chubb is in there. We know everything that's going on. And uh, Deshaun Watson's saying, hey, I've got a shoulder injury, but he was medically cleared to play by the Cleveland Browns staff. So let's get to the reaction from Browns fans on – Deshaun Watson, what will now forever be known as the Deshaun Watson I quit game. Um, congratulations. That's something you would think you would hear from, you know, some wrestling match, you know, pro wrestling, I quit. They have I quit matches. Uh, Deshaun Watson had an I quit match in the NFL, and he didn't even bother to climb into the ring to have the I quit match. He just quit before the game. And we're going to get to the continued shooting down of a narrative that you can blame the Cleveland Browns organization on. And that was the narrative that came out about Baker Mayfield and his teammates hating him. Now, in case you weren't paying attention, that narrative came out around the time you started hearing all the rumors and all the fire around the Browns chasing the guy on the screen, Deshaun Watson. And, of course, former teammate Austin Hooper came out and shot that down and said, no, nobody hated Baker Mayfield in the Browns locker room. Nobody. He shot that down. So, and the one thing these Brown fans are very aware of, they are aware that Baker Mayfield plays with a ton of heart and a ton of fire, and he has a hell of a lot of moxie. Okay, so... Let's get to this. I mean, I, I believe Deshaun Watson is more athletically skilled than Baker Mayfield, but sometimes you got to have a little of that fire, a little of that Brett Favre heart, that willingness to go out there like Steve Young and get your head bashed in and keep on going. It's part of being a great NFL player, I believe. So the Ravens rolled the Browns like a cheap rug from Walmart. That's the comeback saying that. 28 to 3 in a game that they never that never felt close. Now nah, it was over when it started. With quarterback Deshaun Watson missing an entire week of practice due to what the Browns called a shoulder bruise, they were forced to start rookie quarterback Dorian Thompson Robinson against the Ravens. Quote, DTR, as he's known locally, looked every bit the rookie, making his first NFL start against a vulnerable defense like the Ravens. He finished with 19 completions on 36 pass attempts for 121 and three interceptions. The Ravens sacked him four times. During the game, CBS announcers revealed that the MRI showed fluid around rotator cuff of Watson's shoulder. Despite the long-term concerns from fans, head coach Kevin Stefanski said on Monday that the team doctors cleared Watson 
to play against the Ravens, and the quarterback made a personal decision to set out the game before the team's bye. Should be noted, he heaped a lot of praise onto the tight end that got burned last week but chose to play in a gutsy performance in the game. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Quote, he knows his body. He's played through serious pain before. Very, very serious injuries. It wasn't a matter of pain tolerance or anything. He just did not feel he had his full faculties, Stefanski said, according to PFT. Browns fans were quick to question the decision by their franchise quarterback. Yeah. If Deshaun Watson was medically cleared and Stefanski said it wasn't a pain tolerance issue, then what was it, question mark? I'm genuinely asking. Confused. Don't worry, a lot of people's confused by it. It's called $50 million guaranteed. He doesn't give a F. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you got a quarterback that is thinking about his money. This was the most telling comment, I believed, that I saw. Wild horses couldn't have dragged Baker Mayfield off the field, but Deshaun Watson was literally like, nah. Boy, if you think a blue-collar city like Cleveland doesn't notice I quit, man, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. You absolutely, absolutely know that that fan base can see a worker, see somebody that's willing to go through with it, and somebody that just gives up. A couple of years ago, I flew all the way to Cleveland to watch a one-armed Baker Mayfield get willingly shelled by the Cardinals for four straight quarters. Yeah, he got out there in the fire. He played through it. That's what Baker does. Wait, Watson set himself? Three question marks? How do you do that as a quarterback and expect your team to still back you? Question mark. Baker Mayfield was better for Cleveland than Deshaun Watson will ever be. Yeah, these fans are pissed. They're pissed as Baker Mayfield balls out down in Tampa Bay right now. It's really, really crazy. So, now you got the Bucks GM. He was with uh, Peter Schrager on the season, the podcast, and... Made some comments. Now, now keep in mind, supposedly, the Browns said that Baker Mayfield was a horrible teammate. And then Austin Hooper came out and said this, quote, everything that came out about him, it was nothing from the guys on the team, Austin Hooper said via Bucks Wire. Once decisions were made, certain people within the building had to justify their decision. That's all I'm going to say about that. He's never had any issues with anyone in the locker room. He's a great teammate, he's a great dude, and always checks in on everybody. That was about Baker Mayfield, his relationship with his teammates in Cleveland, and his leadership. Now, it was called into question by by supposedly teammates in Cleveland, and that that narrative got destroyed right there. It got destroyed. By the way, then you had this come up. Then you had this come up in December. Baker Mayfield was never seen as a difficult teammate during time with Panthers. Uh Uh-oh. We got that narrative getting shut down, and now you have Bucks players and their GM coming out, and they are crapping all over the notion that Baker Mayfield isn't loved by his teammates and that he has not got fire and he is not willing to learn. And the GM just flat says it. They love him. And he's smart as hell. Now, as it turns out, Baker, he's a very, very smart person. Um, I knew he was smart. You know, we did our due diligence on him coming out. We weren't looking for a quarterback that year, but um, um, knew that he was smart. I didn't realize just how incredibly smart he is. And he was targeting us. I mean, maybe more than we were targeting him. A little flirtation, if you will. (laughs) He saw this as an awesome opportunity for him. Um, you know, and we told them from the beginning that this is going to be a, you're going to be in a competition here because we, we really like Kyle Trask. And, 
he didn't, you know, as you know, Baker, he didn't flinch. He accepted that, and, um, you know, he just ran with it. And it was a good competition, but we, we saw a lot out of Kyle um, that we loved to see, too. He was doing a, he did a hell of a job for us. Um, but he is such a, the, you know, even as I go around town, people go, what's Baker like? Is he yeah. a good guy? It's like, I don't know where this started that he wasn't a good guy, and... I mean, I think you could point to a few things that maybe people got the wrong impression of him, but he's a freaking awesome dude. <laughs> he is a dude. And the players saw it right away. I mean, he's whether he's taking the linemen to the Bahamas, uh, you know, during uh, on our break during camp before the first, uh, you know, after final cuts uh, to go golf, um, or he's... He spotted around town at dive bars with a different group of <laughs> position group with receivers with Mike Evans, you know, um, with uh, Godwin with these guys. He he really knows he's not doing it's not fake. He really knows how to how to be a dude with the team, and and they love him. They love him. He's a dude. He's a straight up dude. And you think Cleveland, the fans aren't missing that guy right now? considering what it is they've currently got. A guy that played through injury, a guy that's a dude's dude, the teammates love him, you think they don't play hard for him? And he's right, Baker was smart. You know, a lot of people, including myself, we didn't take a step back and just go, you know, Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, there's still weapons on this team. They're going to score some points. You know, this could end up being a good thing for Baker Mayfield, and it looks like it is. And it also goes to show you, you know, between the, the, the idea to go pursue Deshaun Watson to begin with, that was a terrible idea by the Cleveland Browns to begin with. They had a franchise quarterback they invested in, but they needed to get Baker the right offensive mind. They got Dave Canales down there in – Tampa Bay right now, who's obviously done great things with Russell Wilson. He's now in in Seattle, and now he's doing some things with Baker Mayfield. By the way, he helped turn around Geno Smith, too, and I did a video on that. But the point is, instead of getting the right offensive mind around Baker Mayfield in Cleveland, they decide they get rid of him and go get a guy that had 25 civil lawsuits for massages. By the way, again, I will remind everybody, Houston police believed they had enough to indict him on sexual assault. It was the prosecutor that chose not to pursue it, the grand jury that did, didn't want to pursue it. The police and the detectives believed they had enough for multiple charges in Houston against Deshaun Watson. But that's the guy they went and actively pursued and gave up on the All-American kid, the Heisman Trophy winner, for that guy. Browns fans are shaking their heads. And look, there's a portion of the fan base that loves Deshaun Watson. But I got to be honest with you, it's the same guys that printed up T-shirts about F those women that Deshaun Watson did whatever to. And, you know, I mean, really despicable, creepy things that they sell out in the parking lot and whoever's buying that. I mean, they're creep shows in your fan base anyway, you know, and every fan base has got them, but you get the point. Tell me what you think, black and white sports supporters. Watson down, Baker up. Just not for Cleveland. Peace, I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.